Welcome to Geographical Analysis, Lecture 22 on Correlation Analysis. Last class we learned about the Pearson's R statistic, which is a correlation statistic that can be applied to interval and ratio data in order to find the strength of linear monotonic relationships between two variables. Today we're going to look at a few different statistics for, care, for correlation uh, that relaxes some of the assumptions about the, about the nature of the relationship between the two variables. In this example, we're going to apply correlation statistics to a data set of, of cities and an air quality index variable. This is just an indicator of air quality that's a, uh, a measurement of uh, the amount of pollutants in the air. And this is just a ranking scheme between 0 and 100, where 0 means good air quality and 100 means poor. Here's our data set. We have 10 Canadian cities on the east coast of Canada in the maritime provinces. For each city, we've recorded their AQI, their air quality index value, and their population. We've also identified the ranking of both of these two variables. So St. Joseph is the, is the city with the highest level of AQI, but Halifax is the city with the largest population. And here we have the scatter plot of the two variables, population versus air quality. And the question is, is air quality related to the population? In order to compute this to, to conduct this test, we're going to compute a Spearman's rank correlation. This is different to Pearson. It's annoying because almost all of the letters are the same between those two names, but they are in fact different. So Spearman's is what we're going to learn today as a rank correlation statistic. And that's because Spearman's computes the correlation on the ranks of two variables, x and y. The reason to do this is that we can relax the normality constraint. So with Pearson's correlation, we have to assume that x and y are normally distributed. We don't need that assumption with Spearman's correlation. Also, for Pearson's, we can only measure the strength of a linear relationship. In the case of Spearman's, we can relax that assumption and now we can look at the, str at the strength of relationship of nonlinear relationships. So the relationship that might look like this, where the slope is smaller here and larger there, or some other kind of nonlinear pattern. And finally, one of the nice things about Spearman's rank is we can apply it to ordinal data sets. All we have to do is take an ordinally measured variable, convert it into a rank, and then we can compute the Spearman's rank correlation. Pearson's R can only be used on interval or ratio data. So we can't apply Pearson's R in ordinal measurements. The statistic for Spearman's R really depends on this term, the sum of di squared. Here, di is the difference in ranks for a pair of observations. So for an xy pair, we're going to compute, we're going to calculate the rank of that observation in each of these variables x and y. So say a city, Halifax, we found that it was the largest city, so it has a rank of 1 in terms of population. And over here, it has a AQI ranking of 6. And therefore, the difference between these two ranks is 6 minus 1 equals 5. So di equals 5. And this term, di squared, equals 25. So we're going to calculate di squared for each observation, each city, sum them all up, and just compute this ratio in order to get the uh, Spearman's rank statistic. Uh, let's look at uh, this formula for a moment. Spearman's rank is a statistic that can, like all correlation statistics, implies a negative relationship at the value of minus 1 
in a positive relationship at the value of 1. So in order for there to be an extreme positive relationship, we see that this portion of the fraction has to equal 0. Since the correlation equals 1 minus this fraction. That's the only way we can have Spearman's rank, Spearman's correlation statistic equal to 1. So when does this occur? This would occur when all of the di squares equals, uh, equals 0. So when the difference between the ranks of two variables is 0, then di squared will be 0, and this whole fraction will be 0, which means that Spearman's r will be equal to 1. So for example, if we had Halifax was ranked 1 on both variables, and then the next city was ranked 2 on both variables, and the next th city was ranked 3 on both variables, the, the, d, the difference in ranks would be 0 for all of these cases, and therefore the sum of di squared is equal to 0, and this implies a perfectly positive correlation when the two ranks are perfectly uh, equivalent to one another. The opposite case is when the two ranks are complete opposites to each other. So if we had these three observations and they were ranked 1, 2, 3 on one variable and 3, 2, 1 on another variable, here we're going to maximize di squared. So in this case d would be 2, 0, and 2. So di squared or the sum of di squared would be 4, would be 8. And in that case, when we multiplied all of this out, we would find that this fraction equals uh, 2. So let's do it very quickly here. We have 6 times 8, so we have 48 divided by, in this case we've got three observations, so 9 minus 3, 48 over 6 equals I'm sorry, we don't have 9 minus 3, we have 27, 3 times 3 times 3, 27 minus 3, so we have 48 over 24, which equals 2. So when the ranks are perfectly opposite, or completely negatively autocorrelated uh, with one another, then this ratio is going to be minus 2, sorry, this ratio is going to be equal to 2, and the statistic is going to be equal to be 1 minus 2 equals minus 1. So when the ranks are totally the same, correlation is going to max out at 1, and when they're complete opposites, correlation is going to be minus 1. Well, if we want to do some inferential testing, we start with the null hypothesis that the population uh, correlation is equal to 0. The alternative is usually the non-directional case, just that there is some correlation. And just as before, we can compute a t-statistic with, with this formula, and the statistic is going to be distributed with n minus 2 degrees of freedom.